Welcome back to Express on this Tuesday, February the 19th. Well, the government of British Columbia is releasing its budget today, and we brought in a political expert to give us a preview of what we can expect. Michael Gagan is one of our go-to people when it comes to all things BC. He's coming to us from our studio in Victoria today. So, Michael, what are you expecting uh, in the budget today from Premier Clark? Well, actually, I'm not expecting a lot. What I'm, ex I'm not expecting a lot of pre-election goodies. What I am expecting uh, is a budget where they attempt to demonstrate, look, we are sound fiscal managers of the uh, province's finances and of the, and of the province's economy, and therefore we deserve yet another mandate from the people of British Columbia. So in that sense, it's a pre-election budget, uh, but in terms of specific goodies, um, they really don't have a lot of financial room in which to maneuver. Yeah, but what needs to be in there to satisfy the people of BC, like you're, just, you're mentioning? Well, first of all, there has to be, by legislation, a balanced budget. And, and one of the controversial things is they've leaned pretty heavily on uh, liquid natural gas revenues and royalties in an industry that's notorious for overestimating uh, what those revenues will be and also is very dependent on an export market where, you know, anywhere from four to six times as, uh, you, it costs four to six times as much uh, liquid natural gas in the Asian market as it does in the North American market. So they're banking very heavily on a relatively new industry and getting it to market, which in BC, anything to do with fossil fuels is controversial given the very strong environmental movement and unresolved land claims in this province. Yeah, absolutely, which we've talked to you about before. Now, a uh, quick question for you. When it comes to liquefied natural gas, or LNG as folks uh, call it in the jargon, I mean, does anyone actually believe the provincial government can raise more than $100 billion in revenue from the liquefied natural gas industry? I mean, that seems like an astronomical number. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a very large number, in, and they're looking for it in a relatively short period of time. I mean, let's keep in mind that both the governing Liberals and the opposition NDP are both counting on liquid natural gas, LNG revenues, uh, to keep the province, uh, you know, solvent. But, uh, you know, I think it is a tad over-optimistic, and that's part of the problem with our current fixed election date. We have, we have it set for the spring. So whatever government's in power, they drop a budget, and then literally within a couple of months, they're into an election campaign. And so there's no real chance to determine uh, the accuracy of that budget. That's why a lot of people have said, next time, let's have a fall fixed election date. So whatever the last budget is, there's a real chance to see if it was anywhere close to the mark. Okay, so basically you're saying this budget doesn't even matter at the end of the day. Well, it, it, it matters in the sense of... Uh, of they ha it, it has to be reasonably credible, but at the end of the day, no, in terms, in terms of uh, the election campaign, I mean, the, the, the government is still 15 points behind the opposition, so if there is a change in government, which right now seems likely, um, it's going to be a whole new ball game uh, in terms of what direction the province is headed. The other thing is, is that the current finance minister, Mike DeYoung, um, you know, as Minister of Health, he wasn't exactly noted for keeping a lid on spending. I mean, I've, I've raised the issue of, of the rather explosive growth in health care administration budgets uh, in British Columbia. He wasn't noted for, for keeping close tabs on that. So if they do get in again, there's going to be some who are questioning, you know, is this a guy who, who can actually, you know, control the expenditures at the, at the civil service level? All right, so then how do you think this budget might affect the election campaign uh, moving forward? Because we're now, what, less than three months away? Well, like I say, both the government and the opposition are, to a certain extent, uh, uh, um, dependent on uh, revenues from this new industry uh, in order to do what they want to do. And I think that's, that's going to be a challenge for British Columbians. I mean, we have a sizable uh, group of, of the electorate who don't want to see anything in terms of resource extraction and they don't understand look without resource extraction most of the social programs you depend on the health care the education systems they simply won't be funded there, there would have to be dramatic cutbacks in those areas without resource extraction that's going to be a tough one for the electorate to wrap its head around and that's why the opposition has been relatively silent on how dependent they are going to be on resource extraction uh, in terms of uh, governing uh, should, they, should they win the next election. Thanks, Michael. Michael Gagan, a political consultant coming to us from Victoria, British Columbia. Just a short time ago, Prime Minister Steve